Welcome to another edition of Residence on the Rooftop, here live above the fourth story of the 1500 block of 15th Street, Mission District, San Fran, Diddy Cisco. I'm your host, Onion Periwinkle Jones. It's a blustery June night, clouds rolling in from the Pacific, faster than hot cotton candy fluttering above the city like moths migrating towards light bulbs. We've climbed the stairway and rooted around in the gravel, and here tonight we'll be introducing you to three long-standing, upstanding, four feet, on the ground, standing, genuine neighbors. Ladies first, or as they say in French, Enchanté, my sister ate a monkey, ah ha, ah ha, ah ha. Take it away, Eloise. Born and raised, San Francisco, mmm, yeah, really all I've ever known. Sure, I've gone on some road trips up the coast of Mendocino County through the Napa Valley and all that, but never been onto the state. Me? Oh, I'll be 43 in August, but golly, I suppose I just never had an itch to see the world. My parents were bagel bakers, made the best bagels on this here side of the bridge. My dad's favorite bagel invention was what he liked to call the Philadelphia taco pie. He'd put raisins and ketchup and a bit of peanut butter between two halves of bagel, and that's what you get. My mom always wanted him to turn the business into a sweet corn fast food sort of dealie. She was a little obsessed with peanut butter, too. Never even used to cook the corn, just shucked the bejesus out of it, slathered on some crunchy style, and took a bite. One time, I remember we were sitting on the stoop outside having a little after-school snack when this lion drives up in a beater of an ice cream truck and tosses ketchup-flavored ice cream bars at my mom and I. Strangest thing! Well, we just covered it in peanut butter and kept on snacking. What a memory! My mother, she died when I was only seven years old, hit by a trolley on Market Street trying to rescue a pigeon with its foot caught in between the tracks. I heard after she got hit, flower petals began to rain down just over the derailed trolley. Some folks began to sing a little song for me. So the name's Otis. I got a bad foot and some indigestion problems. Nothing a little Rolaids can take care of. Berry flavored. I've had a pretty good life. Could be a little better. Probably a little worse. Right down the middle, I suppose. My old man used to say to me, When I was your age, I used to take all these old darn automobile tires from the junkyard and roll them down to the fisherman's wharf and set them on fire with a whole crap ton of gasoline. Because that's what my dad did when he became a man, and that's what his dad did when he became a man. And I'll tell you what, it lit up the night sky like it was a giant birthday cake floating out there on top of the ocean or something. So if you want to call me Grandpa, you better get that sky glowing and pretend it's your birthday, newbie. I never really had a chance to try it. I actually never broke the law a single time. Well, if you're not counting the time I relieved myself in an old milk jug on the way back from a wedding in Santa Fe. My brother married a pretty little panther he met down in Valencia back in 1982. They shared this flat with me for a few years. Those were happy times. Though in the spring of 1985, his little lady ran off with a lion she met up the street. He came up and snatched a half-drunk Dixie cup of molasses out of her paw, mumbled something about lipstick, and would never hear from her again. Poor brother of mine. Like I said, I could have had it a lot worse. Hey, yeah, uh, hey, me, uh, no, no, yeah, Eddie. Oh, uh, well, my friends call me Eddie, but, well, except for Oscar, he calls me Beans, or, or Bean, Bean for short. I like it here, good, good place. I got, I got lots of water to swim in, I... I like water so much. It makes me feel safe. Water makes me feel safe. Yeah, kind of, kind of safe uh, sometimes. Uh, safe for thinking about tomatoes. You, you know, I saw a shark once in a magazine and got real nervous every time I even thought about water. 
Even when it rained the first time after the National Geographic photo scare, I locked myself in the cupboard under the staircase, even though I knew that a spider lived in there. But you know, he was just a normal spider, and not, not one of those water spider, water strider types, so I got this gallon of distilled water and a measuring cup to protect myself. Heard that spiders are scared of water, like wolves are scared of supermarkets. I anyways, I, I think it was a good rite of passage trembling in there with the water, that gray furry spider getting nowhere near me and my hands shaking all night. The water dripping a little like a miniature baptism. Mr. Wiggles died in plush corduroy. He was a fan of the late great baseball legend Doc Ellis and an avid collector of mid-80s lipstick stain coffee cups as well as first edition Choose Your Own Adventure novels. In the words of Leroy of Leroy and Sons Dry Cleaning, Mr. Wiggles is remembered as a charismatic fellow who couldn't keep ketchup off his lapel pins. I recall the time he bought a fixer-upper ice cream truck and drove around the city giving away free ketchup-flavored ice cream bars. Mr. Wiggles is survived by an unknown number of illegitimate but well-loved children. He was a man of many truisms, including Buy me the butter and your bread will be toasted. Can't get enough of that laundry exhaust. And sweet corn in the morning, stroking off in the bathtub, no bubbles. A funeral service will be held Saturday, July 10th at Fritz's Gourmet Belgian Fries. In keeping with his last wishes, Mr. Wiggles' ashes will be spread throughout the facility's deep fryers, allowing his remains to be enjoyed by all. Special limited edition Mr. Wiggles' ketchup packets will be available to the first 300 mourners. 